Do you want a simple way to switch between shore power and your inverter without flipping a switch? An automatic transfer switch does this for you automatically or manually. And in this video, I will show you how it works. You can use it for emergency backup power during a blackout or for your RV. The automatic transfer switch has two inputs, one for shore power or the grid and one for your inverter. The output at the bottom goes to your loads. It always prioritizes input number one. In my case, it's shore or grid power. For example, when you're driving your camper, everything is powered by your inverter, which is wired to input number two. When you arrive at a campsite and you plug your vehicle into shore power, it switches automatically to use the shore power because it's wired to input number one. And if you decide to leave the campsite and unplug the shore power, it switches back to the inverter. So no manual switching is needed. Here's how you wire it. The shore power connects to number one. In my case, it goes to my wall outlet. And the inverter's AC output connects to number two. The inverter output goes to number two in the back. This is a neutral to ground link which I will talk about later. The output terminals at the bottom go to your van's AC sockets, which will power your appliances. In my case, it goes to the GFCI first, which I will talk about as well, and then it goes to the AC power strip. Imagine you're driving the van, your appliances are running on the inverter and there is no shore power connected. This is what's demonstrated here. The inverter is now powering my load. But when you pull into a campground and plug into shore power, the ATS will automatically switch over, as I will demonstrate now. The description says that the switching happens in 0.05 seconds. But when you disconnect the shore power, it takes longer. So don't expect this transfer switch to work very fast. Alternatively, you can also switch it manually. You have to toggle the switch to manual. Let's now test by unplugging shore power how long it takes to switch over back to the inverter. I think that's longer than 0 0.05 seconds. And for a second use case, imagine you're connected to the grid under normal conditions, just like this. If the grid fails, the automatic transfer switch will detect it and switch over to your inverter power, as I will show you now. This is perfect for keeping a fridge powered during a blackout or during load shedding. Now, let's talk safety. We need to add breakers to protect the system. One breaker from the shore power input and this protects the cable against overcurrent from the shore power connection and one breaker between the inverter and the automatic transfer switch to protect the cable coming from the inverter and one breaker after the automatic transfer switch preferably with a built-in GFCI this protects your AC sockets from ground faults I'm using extra breakers because I didn't see any certification on the automatic transfer switch itself. I'm using a 16 amp breaker for shore power and inverter power. 
In my case, that's 16 amps times 230 volts equals 3680 watts. Since I have a 2000 watt inverter and I don't power anything more than 2000 watts, when I'm connected to shore power, we can use 2.5 mm square or 14 gauge wire. And if you're in the US, you need to do the following calculation. Imagine you have the same 2000 watt inverter, but since the voltage in the US is 115 volts, you will have a current of 2000 watts divided by 115 volts equals 17.4 amps. And then multiplying by a safety factor of 1.25, we become 21.75 amps. So people in the US will need a 25 amp breaker and the wire that can carry at least 25 amps. And this is a 12 gauge or four millimeter square wire. I made a separate video showing how to install a ground neutral bond to make the GFCI work properly. So check it out if you want more information. But in short, you'll need to bond the ground and neutral at the inverter's AC output. This ensures the GFCI can detect faults, whether you're on shore power or running off the inverter. I did it with this jumper wire between the ground of the inverter and the AC neutral. Let's talk about GFCI protection, because it's crucial for keeping your van's electrical system safe. In my setup, I have a GFCI with integrated breaker after the automatic transfer switch. I connect the inverter ground to the grounding bus bar, and I connect the shore power grounding to the bus bar as well. You might think this will create grounding loops, but there is only one ground to neutral connection here, the inverter or the shore power because the ATS is switching between the two. Let's test the GFCI when it's working in inverter mode. I will use this resistor and I'll make a connection between the live and the ground. You can see the GFCI just tripped. When I test it in the shore power mode, the GFCI trips as well, but also the GFCI in my house distribution board, which is a shore power connection. So we have two GFCI stripping. If you want to dive deeper into how a GFCI protection works and how to set it up, check out my other videos where I break it down in more detail. I posted this video before, but a commenter pointed out a potential safety issue when the system is connected to shore power and the fault occurs in the inverter. Let's take a closer look at what happens. First, let's see how the system works when running on inverter power. The ATS will be in position 2 and the sockets will be protected by the GFCI and the grounding wire connects back to the source, in this case the inverter. Now, when we connect to shore power, the ATS switches to position 1, because it has priority over inverter power. However, the grounding cable remains connected to the inverter. If a live to neutral ground fault occurs in the inverter, like this, the grounding wire can become energized, even though we are on shore power. This is a dangerous situation, because now the case ground will be live. So the grounding of your AC strip will be live. A commenter suggested that the best solution is to disconnect the inverter's ground from the grounding bus bar when using shore power. We can do this using a simple DC switch to break the grounding connection when we are on shore power. You can use this switch to disconnect the grounding wire. 
But after thinking about this issue for several days, I've realized that if a short occurs inside the inverter, whether or inverter power or shore power, it will create a dead short in the inverter. This happens because of the previously established ground to neutral link, which connects the neutral to the ground. In the event of a fault, this connection could cause the inverter to get damaged or blow its internal fuses. While inverter faults to ground are rare, they do happen. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the issue. Let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas or solutions. Now, how do you charge your batteries when you're plugged into shore power? First, check your ATS. At the moment, it's in number 2. And number 2 means it's working on the inverter. So the first step is connect to shore power. Now the ATS will show number 1, which means we connected to connection 1, and connection 1 is shore power. Now we just plug in the battery charger in the AC distribution strip, and our battery will start to charge. Let me know in the comments how you switch between shore and inverter power. If this video was helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one.